Hello everybody and welcome to episode 26 of Let's Play with Leeds. Welcome to season 3. We have had a busy summer, both outgoing and incoming. We will go through it all in just a second. We will also take a look at the season preview as we look to push on from the Europa League into those Champions League places in our third season of this save. So let's dive in to the transfer activity. And in order to do that, we need to go back to last season. We lost a few players towards the end of the last season. So Patrick Bamford joined Celtic for £20 million. Gareth Bale left on a free for Galatasaray. Liam Cooper got his new challenge with Nice. And Lloyd Kelly joined Brighton for £20 three million pounds that wasn't the only ones that left the football club there are a host of players that have gone out on loan Ian Paveda has joined Nice so he's joined Liam Cooper at Nice which is nice to see Rodrigo his deal was confirmed with Valencia he has joined two by two hello Ricardo Rodriguez has joined him at Valencia Alan Rodriguez went to Zenit St Petersburg Rasmus Christiansen joined Lloyd Kelly at Brighton and Odson Edward has left the football club for £23.5 million. We have replaced him. We've done a bit of business, mainly defensive, but there are a couple of attacking players in there as well. Let's meet the new additions. And we'll start with a man that's been a closely guarded secret between me and me since probably the end of February when Nunes Perez has joined the football club. He is very much an upgrade on what we already have and what we've let go in the summer. For a fee of £46 million. It is by far the most amount of money Leeds United have spent ever on a transfer. So it's a big gamble, but he's so good. You can see the physical attributes alone draw him to. Some of the mental ones are very very high as well he will be the linchpin in the back four and hopefully we'll stop conceding as many goals as we did last season but he is not alone in joining us as a center back Flavius Denislic has joined us from Salarantina for a fee of 12 and a half million pounds an absolute bargain 23 years of age Again, physical attributes, mental attributes, very, very good. He will only get better. He's currently a good Premier League player. He might still improve yet. So yeah, we have sorted out the back two. And it's a very, very, very good back two, I think. So with Rasmus Christensen's departure, we needed a new right back. Enter Sergino Dentst. He has joined us from Barcelona for a fee of just nine and a half million pounds. It is a bargain. I do love a bargain. Again, physical attributes very good. Mental ones are okay. Technical ones will improve. Currently a three star player, looking to be a three and a half star player by the end of it all. Obviously getting a player from Barcelona is a very good thing. My only issue at the moment, he's out for four to six weeks. We hopped across to the other side of Spain to bring in Antonio Blanco from Real Madrid on a free transfer. Currently a two and a half star player, looking to be a three and a half star player when it's all said and done. Attributes are okay. There could be some that are better. More of a squad player at the moment rather than a first team player. Obviously, we've got Mark Rocker. We've got Brendan Aronson. We've got... Tyler Adams, we've got Conor Gallagher in the centre of the park, we've got lots of options in midfield. I'm looking forward to seeing what Antonio can do over time. Now all of a sudden the title of the video will make sense as we bring in Rico Lewis from Manchester City for £9.25 million. Now he was on loan at Crystal Palace last season. I've seen him in real life in the Premier League. He looks a very, very decent player. And for the money, it's a no-brainer. It meets the board objective of signing a player under the age of 23, and he's got bags of potential, and he doesn't need to be registered in the 25-man squad. Thinking ahead. Always thinking ahead. Squad player at the moment, again, will be one of those players that will hopefully progress over time. He will play 
I don't know how much he could obviously play in an abundance of positions, which will help him if we've got a few injuries in certain areas. He is not alone in the young charge department. We have got Isaac Torre on loan from Marseille for the rest of the season. Two star player at the moment, potential to be a three and a half star player. We are currently just having a look at him. I'm not 100% sure whether we're going to sign him at the end, but again, he's an under 21 player. He does not need to be registered. So he's there to kind of fill out a place, if you like. We've got Charlie Cresswell. He's here for the season. That is my intention to keep hold of him, not load him out again. So yeah, we've got about five or six centre-backs now where we can kind of rotate as and when we need to in the four competitions we're in. And we have raided Chelsea for one of probably English football's brightest prospects. I have rescued him from Chelsea and that is Kenny Chukomenka. He has joined us for a fee rising to £30 million. I was trying to do a loan deal. Chelsea wanted an obscene amount of money to take him out on loan. So I thought, you know what? Let's just buy him. Again, he's a player under the age of 21. Doesn't need to be registered. He knows his place in the team. He's a squad player. He will eventually evolve into joining the first team properly. So again, it's going to be a player that's going to see a bit of game time. Probably not a lot, but we'll see how we go. One man that was in the headlines in real life in the January transfer window was Leandro Trossard. He has joined us from Fulham for £19.5 million. We met the release clause. Atalanta were also in for him after what happened in the Conference League last season. I was not going to let him leave for Atalanta because he's a very good player, is Lissandro. He will be very very good we've made a bit of an adjustment in the wide area Almanda is going to probably go out on loan for the rest of the season now it was probably going to be part of the plans going forward but when this one came up a player that he's proven in the Premier League it's a no-brainer and last but by no means least we have Musa Dembele he is going to replace Odson Edward very much an upgrade on Otson Edward, which is why he was allowed to leave the football club. £37 million we have paid for him, though. And he's a homegrown player for his time at Fulham. So it's a no-brainer. Absolute no-brainer. 28 years of age, so he's a year younger than Otson Edward. Got pace to burn, finishing to burn. Obviously, he's got a bit of an act to follow with Otson getting 21 goals last season. I have no doubt... Musa Dembele will do the job. One man who is still with the football club, but only just, is Ebre Eze. Now, Stuttgart wanted him in the summer. They met his release clause of £32 million, which seems a very small release clause in the hindsight of day. So we have upped it to £60 million. We've given it a little bit of a boost in his wages as well, because I did not want to lose him. As for the squad itself, we are full. 25 men are in. Obviously, with the under-21 players, we're up to about 30. Just, maybe. Alex Scott obviously joins that list. Stuart McKinstry is probably going to stay with us, as is Wilfred Ganotto. He's definitely going to stay with us this year. He's sparkling in real life, so hopefully that can continue. Sam Greenwood will probably be loaned out for the season. We've got a lot of options in the wide areas. I mentioned Thiago Elmanda. Same thing for Jamie Shackleton. Joe Bursic is a bit of a gamble not having a third choice goalkeeper on the 25 man list, but it's a gamble I'm willing to take a bit. So, by the looks of the rest of the Premier League clubs, everyone else is kind of keeping their powder dry in terms of bringing players into the football club. Unsurprisingly, we've brought the most in so far. That's me. Sorry. But there are some managerial movements to talk about. So Zinedine Zidane is in the Premier League with Newcastle now. And Postagaku has joined Southampton from Celtic. And I'm not sure why they're mentioning Graham Potter. He is already at Chelsea and has been for some time. But never mind. Looking at the preview for where everyone's potentially going to finish. Manchester City are the favourites to win the title again. Liverpool are at second at 3-1. Chelsea at 13 to 2, Manchester United at 9 to 1, Tottenham at 16, Arsenal at 25, Newcastle at 33 despite their poor season last season. West Ham are at 50 to 1. We 
are at 100 to 1 with Leicester. I am very unhappy that West Ham are in front of us in the betting. I really don't know why. We finished above them in the table last season, I'm just saying. The three promoted sides of Brighton, Bournemouth and Cardiff are back in the Premier League and are down the bottom of it, as you would expect. Although, Southampton are down the bottom and look where they finished last season. So this is not how it's all going to end up. It's just a guide to how they think it's going to go. And with pre-season all wrapped up, we are not going to come back for the first game of the season against Nottingham Forest. Oh no! We are going to come back for the trip to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium to take on Tottenham, of course. Because it's a big game. And if we want to qualify for the Champions League next season, it's a game we need to start picking up results in. Now, there may well be one more addition to the squad. It is a very big name. You will find out next time whether I've decided to do it or not. Love a cliffhanger. If you've enjoyed today's video, please leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to leave me a comment if you've got anything to say. And I will see you at the time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.